welcome to my antique show. On today's show, we are going to talk about the difference between an object that is considered to be antique, vintage, or retro. Can you guess how old an object has to be to be considered an antique? 50 years, 100 years, or 175 years? If you guess the 100 years, then you are right. Objects made in 1920 or earlier would be considered an antique. Now can you guess what is considered vintage? Five years, 20 years, or 65 years? If you guess 20 years, then you are right. Retro is something that looks or has the style of a vintage or antique object. And here is a retro object. It is a book made, and I guess this is made to look like dust or... Out of all three objects, antique is my favorite, and that is why it's called Henry's Antique Show. Our first object is a Polaroid Electric Eye Land Camera Model J66. It was made between 1961 and 1963, and the batteries inside this camera was stamped 1962. We researched this camera and found a great blog about cameras called Down the Road, written by Jim Gray. Mr. Gray lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. He says that the camera was sold in 1961 for $89.50, which would be over $700 if it was sold new today. I bought this beauty for $15 my allowance money at a thirst shop, and it came with a nice leather camera case. It has lots of compartments that flip and extend out. Mr. Gray also said that the film discontinued in the early 1990s, way before I was born, but because it is not yet 100 years old, it is a vintage item. Mr. Gray was so helpful and knows so much about cameras, I invited him on my show. Welcome, Mr. Gray. My first question is, why do you collect cameras? Well, first of all, thanks, Henry. Uh, it's a delight to uh, uh, be a part of this interview. Uh, but the reason why I started collecting cameras, which I did when I was eight years old, all the way back in 1975, is that uh, I was fascinated with how they worked. My grandmother actually bought me my very first ever camera at a garage sale when I was in, in that year. And it was just a little uh, Kodak Brownie. And I was just fascinated to, you know, to push the shutter button and watch the aperture go quick and let it, you know, let it, watch it let light in. Uh, just a fascinating thing. And uh, I started buying more cameras. I would, you know, save my allowance and I would go to a, a garage sale and I would find more cameras there. And uh, over over time as a uh, boy and as a teenager, I ended up with a collection of about 200 cameras. Uh, I don't have most of those cameras anymore. I've moved on. Uh, many of those cameras were simple, simple things that uh, a lot of them were broken. I didn't know what I was doing, right? Uh, and as an adult, I have uh, focused my collection on 35 millimeter SLRs and rangefinder cameras and old folding cameras and cameras that work and cameras that you can still get film for. Uh, but I still have the same fascination. How does this camera work? How is it designed? Uh, you know, what uh, both, both mechanically designed and how is it uh, designed to look? Um, and I'm just fascinated with the wide variety of ways that man has come up with to uh, and add, uh, be able to take a uh, little, little bit of light onto a piece of film and create an image. How do you find out so much stuff about cameras? Well, by the time I started collecting cameras again as an adult, you know, after my early collection, I let it go and I started picking up new cameras, uh, the internet was a thing. It wasn't a thing when I was a little boy. It didn't exist in 1975, but it does exist today. And there were plenty of other people just, just like us who were interested in these old cameras who uh, wrote down what they knew. They wrote down how they figured out how to make it work, and they sometimes found an old manual and were able to you know, share what that had to say. And sometimes they knew something about the history of cameras and were able to share some of that. And so I just did a lot of research on the internet. And over time, I've kind of put together my own understanding of 
know, the history of, uh, of, a, of the camera and how a particular camera, just by picking it up and looking at it, where it probably fits into that history and what it probably meant. So, you know, if you pick up a, a camera from the late 70s, for example, that has any sort of autofocus or auto exposure as a part of it, that's a pretty remarkable camera because autofocus and auto exposure didn't really become very common until the 1980s, mid-1980s. So you know that that was a pioneering camera. These are the kinds of things that you just learn over time. And I like to kind of catalog it all in my head and, and keep track of it and be able to just know these things and enjoy the experience of learning about it and knowing it. How many cameras do you have? Well, I have owned as many as 300 cameras at one time. That's a little excessive. But uh, now I'm down to about 50. Over the last 10 years or so, I've come to realize that I enjoy photography a little bit more than I enjoy collecting cameras. And so the other thing, too, is there isn't enough room in my house to store them all. Uh, 300 cameras is an awful lot. So I've kind of uh, whittled down the collection to those that I'm going to use over and over again and enjoy a lot. So it's about 50 at this point. What advice can you give kids who collect cameras? Oh, this is simple. Just enjoy yourself. Try things. If there's a camera that interests you and you can afford to buy it, just buy it and see what happens. You're going to get a few that don't work. That's just part of the game. Old mechanical gear does break down and it wears out. Uh, and you'll get some that work fabulously and you'll try some cameras. It's like, wow, I didn't enjoy using that one even though it did work. And others that it's like, man, that was just great fun and I liked it. I think for me, the thing that was most interesting about the years I've collected is that I have really, through trying hundreds of different kinds of cameras, hundreds of different cameras, is I know what I like. And I really like an old mechanical 35 millimeter SLR. That's my favorite way to shoot. Uh, yours may be an old bounty, brownie box camera, or yours may be a um, medium format twin lens reflex camera. It's hard telling, but through trying a whole bunch of different cameras, you'll find out what you like, and that's really a lot of fun. From one collector to another, thank you for being on my show. I want to thank you all for tuning into my very first show.